In 2009, I had the idea to buy Billionaires.com. The Billionaires.com miniseries is your chance to get hyper-valuable and unique takes from celebrity billionaires like Tony Robbins and many more. And this guy said, this is great, I love it, I'll give you two and a half million. This series gives you access to exclusive insights from in-person and audio interviews hosted by none other than the founder of the Family Office Club, Richard C. Wilson. Get started now with an official introduction to the $1 billion plus Expert Insights miniseries and see what these nationally renowned billionaires have to say about winning and succeeding in the game of capitalism. This guy, like, like of all the power players I've had in here, he's the smartest guy we've had, <laughs> no doubt. We are going to be talking about the three musts for a lasting family business. And let's see what Richard has to say. Well, yes, Richard, I did say one in a thousand. And to repeat the question, what are the odds of your family business lasting a hundred years? Because you know, what's it all for? Why are we making this money? Why are we putting on those long, desperate hours? Why are we giving it our all? Well, probably because you want your family to benefit and you'd really like your family to last. What can you do to improve the odds? I mean, if the odds in general are one in a thousand, and I should quickly tell you where I get that figure. Uh, how many of you have heard of Dennis Jaffe? Some of you. Okay, he's worth knowing about because uh, he's a hero of mine. He has spent the last 40 or so years studying family businesses and what makes them last. And so he is, it's Professor Dennis Jaffe. He has a lot of uh, academic knowledge of what makes things work. And I have practical experience because as Richard mentioned, my family, actually he didn't mention, he mentioned that I come from uh, the Sheraton family. The Henderson family, my father was the co-founder and president. The Henderson family began as a family business in 1840. And I see in the audience somebody who trumps me on that. But, uh, and the Purdue's have been in business for 102 years. So 182 and 102. I, because I'm a writer by trade, I had a great interest in how did they do it? And let's see some of the things where both my observations and what Dennis Jaffe uh, has learned, they match. And I'm going to share with you the three musts. And more important, I'm going to share with you some ideas of how to inculcate the musts. Let's start with no public quarrels. No public quarrels, what, what the biggest reasons that families don't make it to the next generation and roughly 70% don't make it to the next generation. The biggest reason is family quarrels. How do you avoid them? And why is it important to avoid them? Well, actually, every family, every family that exists is gonna have quarrels, but by the time they're public, it's almost a bridge too far. I know a lot of family counselors who say they won't even accept uh, as a client a family who if they have taken their quarrel public in the sense that it's in the newspapers or they've taken it to adversarial lawyers, it's, it's I mean, there may be families who can put it back together after that, uh, but I don't know of any. Both the Hendersons and the Purdue's teach family members just, I mean, I think I almost learned this when I was still in a high chair. You can argue, you can fight, you can scream if you need to, but the way the Hendersons put it is, uh, we don't wash our family linen in public. And the way the Purdue's put it, we call it the covenant. And the covenant is, again, you can fight as hard as you need to, but you don't take it public. Next, this is something, I, again, I get it from Dennis Jaffe, but it matches my own experience. He said that the families that last, probably by the second generation, but almost certainly by the third generation, they've discovered that philanthropy is just an amazing family glue. Because by the time you're in the third generation, there are a lot of people who aren't working in the, fa in the family business. 
On the other hand, you know, the married ins, the people who aren't part of the family business, they can all get the good feeling that you get from being involved in stewardship. And the third must is, do you know what? I got that backwards. Stewardship. The families that last teach their kids from, from childhood that the family business isn't about them. Oh, I hope I'm, I'm going to say something that may be unpopular with some of you, but here goes. The kids have to be taught that the money isn't that you can go spend it lavishly. No, you're stewards and it's your job to hand the family business over to the next generation in better shape than you inherited it. And so, yes, yeah, spend some of the money, but, but your real job, what you're there for, you know, the families that last are taught this, what you're there for is to teach kids, preserve it and make it grow for the next generation. So Dennis Jaffe says that, and, and I agree with him, that the families that last teach their kids from the youngest age that it's about stewardship. Philanthropy. Well, I already mentioned philanthropy in the part of about family glue. Let's jump ahead to how, you know, I've, I've given three principles. How do you inculcate this into the family? And I'm going to share with you first what the Hendersons do and then what the Purdue's do. Uh, you're looking at John Cleve Sims Henderson from 1840. And he did something that I just recommend to absolutely everybody. It's worked brilliantly for the Hendersons. It works for the Purdue's. He, let, he and his children got together and they endowed uh, a family, it was called the Henderson Family Dinner. It's grown into the Henderson Family Weekend. But in 1890, he and his children put together money to have a get together. And I bet everybody has seen what, what I've seen, which is a family, you know, the, while the patriarch's still alive, Oh, the family's close, it's great. The patriarch dies, and you know, for two or three years they get together for maybe Thanksgiving, other holidays. By the fifth year, maybe they get together for a wedding. By the tenth year, the family's gone poof. If you endow family vacations, uh, this is a way of getting around it. This is a way of helping your family last. Service to the Family Award. The Andersons, we want we want the family members to really figure out what they can do for the family rather than just what they can get out of it. And so every year we have, at our family reunion, we have a service to the family award. And people win it for such things as, just to mention one, uh, Roberta Henderson digitized 10,000 uh, family documents. There, and there's a great big ceremony. Uh, the house that I grew up in has, as everybody else does, a ballroom. Whoever's laughing, thank you. We have a great big ceremony in which uh, we read who the past winners were and you know applaud and just cherish the person who has just won it. So I recommend to everybody to inculcate the culture, a service to the family award. Another one is we have a What It Means to Be Us book. And I brought a copy of it here and I need my partner in crime, uh, somebody to, to hand this around. Just start it and, and hand it around for the next the What It Means to Be Us book. Just just pass it around and let people look at it and it may, it may be circulating the rest of the day. Uh, philanthropic activities. I, I mentioned that before, but this is just such a way to create family glue, especially in a family that's geographically separated. And here's one that the Hendersons do. Uh, we have a blood drive and you get on the honor roll if you've, uh, if you've donated blood. And you know, every new donation of uh, newsletters go out, people are praised. You got a really good feeling. And uh, this is just a picture of one family member donating blood. Now on to how the, hand the Purdue's uh, embed the culture. We have something that I'm really proud of. It's called uh, the children's newsletters. And with the children's newsletters, if you want your family members to absorb uh, lessons from like the youngest age, I recommend a children's newsletter. But the children's newsletters that we have, every newsletter is about embedding one of the family values. One of the Purdue family values is uh, being frugal. 
And so I tell the story of how great grandmother Bunny Do used to, when she'd bake her, her famous biscuits, particularly at Thanksgiving, uh, she would bake the biscuits. But then when she uh, took them off the baking sheet, it had been covered with aluminum foil. And after, after its use, she would wash the aluminum foil and, and reuse it. Uh, or, or save it for reuse. And well, that, that story is good, but it's not enough to really embed the culture. So every newsletter is accompanied with a treasure chest. And the treasure chest has an activity in it that will illustrate what the newsletter was about. And I'll show you what this one includes. It includes costumes. Actually, every treasure chest is going to include costumes because kids love costumes. This is a chef's hat. Uh, here's a, uh, a chef's apron. Here's, mommy do here's biscuit mix. And here is uh, aluminum foil. The kids get to bake their, uh, their biscuits and talk with their grown-up about how we're a fr frugal family and we're an environmental family. We're into recycling. You don't throw away aluminum. That's who we are. The Giving Club. Children from oh, about maybe 8 to 14 have a packet of, uh, of money from the foundation, which they get to decide where it goes. And they get to research uh, you know, what category of thing they're interested in. Then they actually go call on, on the different charities. And this is from a very young age. Uh, but they actually have money that they can give out. And then the family gets together, and or the, the children get together, and they decide where the money goes. And different, they're about twelve in the giving club, and they can each argue for where the money should go, or it could just be divided up. Uh, just really great ways of getting them from a young age. And you know, anybody who studies culture knows get them while they're young. Well, that's what we're doing. Uh, family involvement in the company. And this is kind of on the subject of, of stewardship. During the, uh, during the pandemic, family members showed, I'm going to guess it's close to a thousand uh, masks. And this was in a period when it was hard to get personal protection. And we, we were just so, uh, Purdue employs 22,000 people, so we didn't get everybody. But we got a lot of people, and I think it was very meaningful that family members personally sewed masks. Uh, Subway, oh, I'm so proud of this. Family members got together and we voted, it was something like a couple of hundred thousand dollars of our own money uh, to do the following. We knew that you know, Purdue being an essential industry, the 22,000 people who uh, are processing the food, uh, you know, it's hard times for them. We wanted to show them recognition so what we did, and I wish it was my idea because it's so clever, uh, with the money that we raised, we bought tickets for um, a couple of meals for each, each Purdue associate. And it was tickets at Subway, and that had the huge advantage of Subway has uh, Subway stores or restaurants in every place where we have a processing facility. So Subway was kind of desperate with no, uh, with, with no traffic and they're a big buyer of ours, so we love them dearly. So here we could have the associates uh, buying food and you know, accompanied by a big gushy letter from us saying how important they were and how we valued them. This is a tornado that I mentioned the fam the Kid Giving Club. The Kid Giving, Giving Club, uh, when this, this tornado hit a town that was in a Purdue processing facility, uh, the, the, at this meeting, one, one family member said, you know, let's support the town that supports us. Let's give all our money uh, to one place, and they did. And I just love that, because each one you know, coming in had their own pet. Um, then we're also very involved in uh, the LEAD program. And given that I don't want to run out of time, because I consider it a sacred duty not to go over my time, and I've got 30 seconds left. To summarize, no public quarrels, stewardship, philanthropy. Uh, that's what I recommend to everybody, and I've got 19 seconds left. 
Um, I'm just back from Ukraine. I spent five days there. And if you want to learn about what I learned as the guest of the head of police for Ukraine, uh, and boy, did I see some things like Chernobyl and human trafficking, and I've been writing about it. My time's up. I love you all. Thank you.